shit, don't get shooting. We rep the zone of zoom, we wear the red and blue. Guard is stealing, alley ooping. We rep the zone of zoom, we wear the red and blue. You of A, it's time to own it. We rep the zone of zoom, we wear the red and blue. What's up, Wildcats? I'm Alex Bittish, and alongside me is my co-host, Lisa Lane, and welcome to Cat Nation. Tonight, we're going to open up the University of Arizona basketball vault by taking a look at the very beginning, as well as catching up to where the program currently stands. So stay tuned for a final and very special edition of Cat Nation. Hey, Cat fans. I'm Andy Blejo. And as you all know, Arizona has a rich basketball history under head coach Lute Olson. But do you know who our first head coach was here at UA? Our first coach was Orrin Albert Cates. He coached in 1904 and started scheduling teams from local YMCAs. Our first famous head coach, Pop McHale, was hired away from a teaching job at Tucson High to take over the basketball coach for, and our first intercollegiate game, which was played at Herring Hall, which is actually the second oldest building here at UA. McHale ended his career as head basketball coach with a career winning average of 803, which never has been beaten by a coach with a tenure of more than three years. In 1925, our longest tenured coach at 36 years, Fred Enke, became coaching games at UA Gymnasium, which is now known as Bear Down Gym. We first competed in the Border Conference, but eventually moved to the Western Athletic Conference, also known as the WAC. Enke led the Cats to our first four postseason appearances and led us to our first national ranking and our only WAC championship behind the spectacular play of Bob Elliott. ULM Bruce Larson became head coach in 1961. Hi, I'm Lisa Lane here, hanging out with Dean Metz, former UA basketball player. Dean, thanks for being with me today. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, indeed a pleasure. So tell me a little bit, what was it like to play basketball in the late 50s? We played at uh, uh, Bear Down, and Bear Down was uh, a smaller gym, but they had a balcony, and they filled those, the gym every game. It every was game. every game. So you talked about Bear Down Gym would fill. Do you feel that they had that same sense of pride for this school that we still continue to see today? Yes, oh, definitely. The people got into it. And even though it was a smaller town, uh, football and, and basketball and, and baseball, it was very, it was the focal port, as a matter of fact, more at that time. So tell me a little bit about what it was like to be coached by Fred. He was the first African-American coach, Division I coach. So what was he like as a coach? Well, I, I basically came here uh, under Fred Snowden uh, to, uh, it was a first year in the Pac-10 conference. Uh, it was an exciting time for Arizona basketball and uh, it was a program that was uh, up and coming. Uh, it had uh, a little bit of history before it in you know, major college and, and it was going from there. Well, McHale, uh... Fred Snowden was coaching, and he said he'd fill this place up, and he did. Fred is, was a fabulous game coach. Uh, he he uh, put on a good show. Uh, we were a very uh, up-tempo team, uh, a lot of pressing, three-quarter court press and that type of stuff. So now when we talked earlier, you mentioned that freshmen were not allowed to play basketball in varsity. Could you tell no. me more about that? The rules were an NCAA rules that a freshman could not compete in a team sport. At that time, there was no three-pointer. Uh, so everything was two points and uh, if we dunked it in a basketball game it was a technical foul. Now what was the Pac-10 like as a conference when you first came to this university? This being the first year of the Pac-10 it was kind of unusual because no one expected anything out of Arizona or Arizona State. Uh, the first year that, that we played, um, we, you know, we traveled the, the same road that the, the teams are traveling now, of course changing next year, but uh, you know, we traveled all to the Oregon and Washington schools and all that type of stuff. It was, it was a lot of fun because it was so new to everybody. Uh, and coming in, it was, it was something that everyone had, had the same experience as something brand new. One cannot mention the national brand that Arizona basketball has become today without mentioning the man that brought it to its national prominence, Lou Olson. When Lou first took over the team in 1983, they were the bottom feeders of the Pac-10. But as a testament to his recruiting and player development skills, only three years after he took over, the Wildcats won the Pac-10 title. Arizona was nicknamed Point Guard U because of all the great NBA caliber point guards that Lute developed while here at this Arizona Wildcats program. Some of these players do include Mike Bibby, Damon Stoudemire, Jason Terry, and Steve Kerr. 
You would be hard pressed to find a player that played for Lute Olson, affectionately nicknamed Coach O, that did not think he was one of the greatest college basketball coaches of all time. His resume is extensive here at Arizona and includes one national championship, four Final Fours, 12 Sweet 16s, 11 Pac-10 titles, and 23 straight years in the NCAA tournament under his tutelage. I'm standing here next to the national championship trophy that Lute and the Wildcats won in 1997. Lute's overall career record was 781 and 280, and only North Carolina, with 27 straight NCAA tournament appearances, had more than the Wildcats, whose current streak of 26 ended just this past year. Throughout the 1990s and 2000s, Coach Olsen kept the Wildcats in the national rankings. He had an uncanny ability for taking players that were not highly recruited out of high school and turning them into NBA caliber stars. For his contributions to the game of basketball and the Tucson community as a whole, Lou Olsen was inducted into the College Sports Hall of Fame in 2002. Then he was also inducted into the Arizona Sports Hall of Fame in 2010. Coach Olsen raised Arizona basketball to new heights and made it the national brand that it is today. Hey Wildcats, I'm Lisa Lane sitting here with former basketball player Matt Muehlbach. Matt, thank you for being here. You're welcome. Now, what did you know about the program when you were committing to come here? Like, what was your prior knowledge? Well, Lute Olson had been here four years and, and they were just starting to, to sort of become a, a really good team. They'd won the Pac-10 uh, in his second year, but they'd gone to the tournament three years. They had not won an NCAA tournament game. And in 1987-88, uh, it was just this weird feeling you know, you had you could feel the energy that something was about to happen. The, the the sort of cork was about to pop, and we just knew that that year. And for some reason, the crowd really sensed it. Uh, Mikhail sensed it. The students sensed it. Everybody showed up that first night, and then it was just you know it was it was sort of it was just awesome from there. I was just excited to get out and see the atmosphere because I mean, you think any school is number one or two in the nation is a powerhouse school, and at the time. Uh, we were really rolling well, so I was excited to get out here and see what the fuss was about. So you graduate and Luke continues to build up this program. Were you surprised or was it just exciting? Yeah, you just knew it was going to happen. <laughs> once every, you know, once we hit that final four in 88, you just got the feeling it was going to get even better, and it did. And By the time I came in 92, there was a tradition of winning at home. You did not lose at home. You protected the house. And to come here and you see, you know, I go from playing in high school, we have a few hundred people to 13,000 every game is a big difference. And only 13,000, but 13,000 of the greatest fans in college basketball. So you won two Pac-10 titles, went to the Final Four. How was it to be you know, on a winning team and in a winning program? The way we looked at it, you know, we, we felt to be the dominating team when we walked on the court each time. And that was the way we looked at it. When you came on the McHale Center floor, you knew this was our floor, and no one was going to come in here and take anything from us. And if they did, it sure wasn't going to be it easy. I always tell the story that uh, when we won the Pac-10 title at UCLA, we came back on the plane, and I, I, we never expected this, but there was a gigantic crowd outside the airport, outside of our terminal. We walked outside of the terminal, and there was a gigantic crowd there. And um, then once we went to the Final Four, it was it was ridiculous. It now, Lute is such a legendary coach. What was you know? What's your impression of him, and what makes him so legendary? Well, for me, number one, he's just uh, he's the most classy guy I know. He has a presence when he walks in a room that's undeniable. When you see Coach Olsen walk in, everyone turns turns their head and looks at him. He's uh, one of the most professional guys I know, and he instilled that professionalism in us as players. When you left Arizona basketball, you were a professional already. You knew what was expected of you. You knew what to do. And for my professional career after Arizona, that was probably the, the most important thing I took with me. And uh, there's really, there's no way to describe Coach Olsen. I mean, you know, man, the guy is like, he's, you know, he's a living legend. He's, he's an icon, you know, not just for the city of Tucson, but for college basketball, for the sport of basketball. I mean, the guy is, you know, he's a silver fox. I mean, he, he's done so much for all of us. And uh, I say that because just every, you know, he built the University of Arizona from, you know, from ground zero and turned it, and turned the program into a national powerhouse. And, but he's done so much more. You know, Lute was, uh, he was just everything. You know, he had such intangibles. He was such a, he, he had a, he had a, um, something written in the locker room that said, you know, no one played harder, no one plays smarter, and no one plays together. And that was sort of his calling card. And I think, you know, the fans at McHale Center really enjoyed uh, watching his teams and learning uh, from those teams. And they supported us because we played hard, we played smart, and we played together. And I think during those years, Lute was such a good coach, he almost taught the community. He almost taught the fan base how to watch basketball. And uh, the fans here learned that, you know, if somebody didn't hustle down court and Lute ran by and ripped, you know, a player off the bench into the scorer's table, 
that uh, you know someone was coming out because they didn't run back hard enough and the fans really you know got to know that and I think the the fan base here is really a smart educated fan base. Well you could see the the elite players that came in after Luke got here. Uh, I was fortunate to help with the crew ever since Luke got here as far as uh, running the clock and uh, the excitement of Tucson and the players, it it's just was a different level than I've ever seen. And of course, you can, as you can see in basketball, I don't think it's ever really toned down since Luke got here. And um, uh, he brought in a whole sense of, of complete order. Um, you know, Luke was 100% in control of everything going on, which is what the, the athletic department really needs in a, in a head coach. Uh, he truly coached and managed the team. You know, Coach, I said, what is it like? So what is it like being a Wildcat? What is it like being a part of the program? And, you know, he looked at me and, and he said, you know, David, he said, if you embrace the opportunity of walking on, if you embrace, you know, being an Arizona Wildcat, if you embrace being a student athlete here, so the opportunity will embrace you back in a lot of ways. And, you know, he, he was right. I mean, I, I walked out of there, you know, with uh, like this, with this new confidence in myself. Well, I think Coach Olson, first and foremost, really was dynamic in his ability to recruit, and he recruited people. He didn't recruit just good basketball players, and he didn't recruit just the top 10 or McDonald's All-Americans. You can make the argument some of the all-time great players at this school were very unheralded before they came here. You know, players like Luke Walton, players like Gilbert Arenas, Steve Kerr. You know, you look at who they were coming out of high school and who they were when they left the U of A. It's a real testament to Coach Olson and his staffs how they developed their players, and yet how they never really got caught up in just recruiting the ranking of the player. And clearly, the other part of their ability to recruit was to recruit the very, very best. But you know, he was dynamic in his recruiting. And then he had a great style, both how he coached and how his teams played. And, you know, for us, I have to be the best that I can be. But there are a lot of characteristics that you want to pick up that are easy and clear to see as the new coach. The University of Arizona men's basketball program, a tradition like no other, a true blue blood program, 16 Sweet 16s, eight Elite Eights, four Final Fours, and yes, one NCAA basketball championship in 1997. Basketball truly is life here in Tucson, Arizona, as the men's basketball team continues to dominate all sports. Yes, the program has seen some shaky times, but Sean Miller in his second year has shown why the Wildcats and the student section and the family really believe in one true saying, we never left. The Wildcats currently sit tied with UCLA atop the Pac-10 standings with one game to go in the season, surely looking for their first Pac-10 title since 2005. The Wildcats are a sure lock for the NCAA tournament buying into the idea that we never left, and that's exactly what the point is. Sean Miller has the Wildcats astounding new heights and levels in just his second year as the coach, buying into the fact that at 23 and six, that this program is back to stay. With a top 10 recruiting class coming in next year, the ideals of winning cha basketball championships is back in Tucson. Now the important thing to realize is that Sean Miller isn't here to create a new era. He said he's here to continue what Lou Dolson already started. Now, following a legend is never easy, especially one like Lou Dolson, one of the all-time winningest coaches in Division I basketball. But Miller, he's shown this new determination, new factors, new prestige, new style of play, and that's what really has affected this year's men's basketball team. I'm here, willing to go on record, saying right now, as your co-anchor of Cat Nation, that Sean Miller will win the University of Arizona men's basketball team a title within the next seven years. He's here to stay, ladies and gentlemen. Adapt to his style, love the game. Let's check out his first two years here as coach. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I met, first met Sean Miller actually at McHale Center. Uh, played against him here when he was with Pitt and I was with Arizona and we're the same year and so we played against each other right here at McHale Center. It was a lot of fun and um, he, he's just a tremendous coach. I think he's a lot like Lute Olson in that he's just a good person. You know, I think people uh, really respect the way he does things the right way, the, the defensive intensity. He recruits good players and good people and so I just think uh, it's, it's going to be an incredible run with Sean Miller. He's doing a great job, I think. Uh, he's definitely brings a new passion to Arizona basketball. He's changed things up a lot. Um, you look at 
our recruiting classes are just unbelievable. I mean, you think in just the two years he's been here, the changes he's made is, is just really, really impressive. So, and I expect it to continue, to continue even more. You look at the success we're having this year, of course that's going to spur on even more, uh, more recruits to come here, more attention nationwide, uh, which we didn't have in the last few years. And now uh, we're back on the map big time, and people really have to recognize and respect Arizona basketball. Um, in the short time I was with Coach Miller, um, he helped me grow as a as a leader and a point guard. You know, he's a point guard himself, so we were on, we had to be on the same page a lot. Well, the the thing that uh, I can observe him because I'm on the floor. I don't observe any practices, but I I just like the way he handles his athletes. Uh, he is a good disciplinarian. And it looks to me like the ball players bought into his, his system. And once you get that, you're going to be successful. Now, the winning or losing, it, it depends upon a lot of times the talent that you do have. And it seems to me he has recruited for the future, and we're going to be pretty good. Um, you know, I, the, 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 the direction I see the basketball program going is, is, in is nothing but up. And I say that with the utmost respect. To Coach Miller and his and his staff of guys, I mean they're they're doing such a phenomenal job. And when you think of you know the best up and coming coaches in the country, you you have to include Sean Miller as number one. I mean, he is really really um, involved with the players. Uh, he's he's very very interested in them as not only players but as as young men, uh, student athletes. But he's also interested in in developing a program. Uh, I came to Arizona not because of what we wanted to do last year or even this year, but what we were capable of doing in the future. You know, there's a reason that this program has had such great success over a long period of time, and uh, clearly our motivation every day is to, to reestablish that f as fast as we can, but at the same time, nothing good comes easy. Now, when you come and sit, you said you had season seats. What do you love most about this atmosphere in McHale now? I love the students. I, I, you know, it, it, that's the part that brings you back, uh, is, is the students being excited from opening tip to the end of the game. Um, you know, they, they, uh, they just add that whole sense of excitement. Oh, uh, I, I actually think that uh, they, energi they do energize this whole crowd. They even wake up some of the older people. Uh, it's still a, a fevered atmosphere, without a doubt. You know, we have the now the Zona Zoo, the, no stu the student section that we didn't have back when I was in school, and that makes a big difference. You see the the, the students making all the noise and with the big pictures, the big faces, all those things. That I wish I would have got a big face when I was in college. So I love the big heads. The big heads are unbelievable. A huge huge addition to the uh, to the to the whole Zona Zoo. But you know, the whiteout. I, I will say, and I've had incredible moments at McHale Center, but that whiteout may have been one of the best ever and I was not in the game obviously I was doing the radio but just to see that support uh, to see them come and and you know just get it going like that and really get behind the team they're the heartbeat inside of the arena when they're organized and they're out in full force and loud and together the rest of the of the arena follows and it's what makes Arizona so special well, that concludes tonight's final episode of Cat Nation. On behalf of Alex and myself, as well as all of the Zona Zoo crew, we want to thank you so much for tuning in to Cat Nation all year long. Yeah, we really want to thank you for letting us be your anchors for the entire year and bringing you all that's Arizona sports news. Special shout out to our media team for all their help throughout the course of the year. As well as to Athletics for giving us this opportunity to connect with you, the Zona Zoo crew. So for the last time, for Cat Nation, I'm Lisa Lane. And I'm Alex. I've only been here four years, but I'll be a Wildcat for life booter saying bear down and we'll see you at the game. Rebound, fast break, slam dunk, game over. Kick it, push it, dunk it, shoot it. We rip the Zona Zoo, we rip the red and blue. Guard is stealing, alley ooping. We rip the Zona Zoo, we wear the red and blue. Man to man, a pressure zone it. We rip the Zona Zoo, we wear the red and blue. You obey, it's time to own it. We rip the Zona Zoo, we wear the red and blue.